The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision local program. TV that's close to home. Coming up, the Democratic candidate for Attorney General of the State of Connecticut joins us, George Jepson, on this edition of Cable Visions Meet the Leaders. Hi there and welcome to Cable Visions Meet the Leaders. I'm David Smith. Good to have you along with us today as we welcome uh, the candidate, the Democratic candidate for the Attorney General seat in the state of Connecticut. No, 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 not Dick Blumenthal. That was then. This is George Jepson and that is now. And it's great to see you, George. How are you? Great to be back with you. Welcome to the program. This, this is, uh, you know, something for many who have been in the state of Connecticut for any substantial length of time. Uh, boy, what an anomaly. Uh, it's, it's always been Blumenthal, 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 and uh, times have changed. This has been the, the wildest year in Connecticut politics that I can recall. Yes, it's been quite the year. Uh, Dick's been in office now for, for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've hoped to run for attorney general in the past, and uh, always uh, I would never run against my good friend Dick Blumenthal. Uh, so this is an exciting opportunity for me. Well, one of the people you would run against was uh, Susan Bicewitz and indeed did so successfully. I mean, this, this race has just been, just been more than a little intriguing for uh, political pundits. Yeah, you, you, frankly, you could have knocked me over with a feather when the Supreme Court unanimously ruled that she was not uh, eligible for the, for the position. I had taken no position publicly questioning her, her qualifications. I knew it was a matter for the courts to decide. Uh, they, the court did decide, again, unanimously uh, the way it did, and, and that's created an enormous opportunity for me. My, my father always said, I'd rather be lucky than good. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I think uh, most people would suggest that you are both, but uh, <laughs> in this case, uh, lucky certainly paid off, and certainly from the party standpoint, probably paid off as well, because it meant uh, sort of instant unity uh, along the way. Yeah, it was a unanimous convention for me, and uh, there's no primary, and this gives me an extraordinary opportunity to, to reach out and broaden my base, uh, reach out and get known in parts of the state. Uh, uh, that I'm less known than I am down here in, in southwestern Connecticut, and to, uh, to talk to the, the, the leaders, you know, affected industries, affected constituencies that, that, uh, that deal with the Attorney General's office on a day-to-day -day basis and, and uh, reach out to them. Well, we, we should say that uh, for those of you who are not as familiar with, uh, with George as uh, you'd like to be, uh, you've been an attorney for many years, very actively practicing in lots of different uh, areas, but uh, you have also been in the legislature for a number of years, indeed heading up the, the Senate for a number of years. Uh, you've had your, your fingers and your interests in lots of areas all over the state of Connecticut. Well, I, I think I bring a lot to the job, uh, you know, starting with my strong legal qualifications. I'm an honors graduate from Harvard Law School where uh, by taking course overloads I was able to earn a master's degree in public policy from the Kennedy School as well to help pay for my education. I worked as a teaching fellow in constitutional law for former Watergate prosecutor Archibald Cox. Uh, when I got out of school I didn't go the normal high-paying corporate law firm route. Instead I went to work actually right here in Norwalk uh, as staff counsel to the Carpenters Union for Western Connecticut uh, for nearly 10 years. Issues that affect working men and women was my daily daily job, things like wages and health benefits and, and pensions, job site safety and the like. Uh, the last 16 years I've been in, in private practice at some really great firms and the bottom line with respect to legal qualifications is that uh, you know my 26 years with the Carpenters and in private practice has given me I think a really ground level hands on sense of how the law can have an impact on people's day-to-day -day lives, and I think that's what I uniquely bring to this race. Uh, you're right, I did serve in the legislature for 16 years, including six as majority leader of the Senate. Uh, prior to that, I chaired the Judiciary Committee, which is the committee through which um, all issues of legal process must pass, and, and uh, what I love is, is, is issues. And uh, I had a record of, of recognized leadership on everything from consumer protection, domestic violence, uh, protecting a woman's right to choose, uh, you know, gun violence, including the ban on assault weapons, uh, clean air, clean water, uh, things like uh, living wills and end of life issues. So uh, I'm ready to go back and be an advocate once again, this time not as a legislator, but as, a, as an attorney. 